Alrighty then, it's time for a game with the main man Jarvan. Let's do this. Which one? And this is also on the main account. I'm about to play the ranked queues. Let's do it with the main account now, just to get through promotion, since you guys know I've been playing with the other ones. Anyhow, I actually went into this game thinking I was going to go, you know, full-on ass destroyer Jarvan, because look at their team comp. Their front line is Poppy, and yeah, she can stop Jarvan, but... My idea was to sort of uh, try to either go through Nocturne and kill the Caitlyn or the Zeroth or something like that. You know, just pierce through and dunk them. Maybe kill two people and then die. But I was hoping, look, my team is ridiculously destructive. And if we, if I kill one of their main targets, one of their MVPs, they, the rest of them should sort of, you know, fall, fall apart. That was my idea. That was my intention. But you'll see the game sort of develops into a way in which uh, I can't really do that so you're gonna see my item build go from an AD build and then sort of rework that into a sort of bruiser then tank build so just keep that in mind you'll see anyways my teammates uh, both get killed two, two for nothing right now I end up catching the nocturne luckily because uh, I guess this teammates just sort of abandoned him and they didn't try to you know lobby up some uh, tank shots I mean turret shots or anything so he just kind of died ungloriously still though or two for two right now. The atmosphere for the game is already toxic. Players are already fighting, already arguing. The vein is yelling at the thresh. I'm getting yelled at with a victor for I don't know, not ganking. But as you can see, it just kind of can't be done. Again, my item is tailored sort of to go for physical first because I wanted to kill them. But yeah, uh, just sort of look at how the game is developing right now. I can't really kill or gank anybody because mid lane is very. The, the Zeroth is kind of, you know, toying with the Victor at this point. The Victor does manage to kill the Zeroth, but I didn't catch it on the replay camera. The Zeroth just kind of very fucked up in his approach and got punished for it. My bottom lane is not making very good trades. They keep going in and sort of get themselves baited and it results in them getting killed or something. There, the Thresh got a very good pick on the of the brand, but Kayla gets the revenge kill. That's sort of similar situation. My top lane... It's very pushed out, so I can't help it. By the way, I love this fight. I use my EQ on him as soon as his fear is about to pop, so I don't really lose any animation. And we're both trying to trade the blows for the blue buff, try to get as close to the wall, so the blue buff hits the other guy. I got more hits from the blue buff than he did, but I still managed to beat him, mostly because he didn't have his ult. If he had his ult, he could have finished me off with that final burst. So I lucked out that he used it to kill somebody else a little while back. But yeah, that was very close, just juggling the blue ult's punish uh, punishes. By the way, here... I want to gank mid, mostly because the Victor doesn't shut up and I wanted to kill Zerath. But the Victor is doing a really bad job of, of sort of baiting him. I kind of got the idea that it might have been warded, but might have, probably not. But the Zerath might have sort of started, you know, thinking, the Victor can't be doing this such stupid plays if, uh, if I was going to be gank getting ganked. So he just played safely. Uh, my idea was that the Victor was hopefully, you know, standing behind the minion lane, maybe get the Zerath to try to all in him or something, but he made it very obvious that something was up by just sort of being like, hey, shoot me over here with, with my super low health. Yeah, whatever. Was, I, I'm trying to get also as farmed as possible, trying to steal as much farm and, you know, getting as much jungle minions as well. You can see this, the farm difference between me and the Nocturne, although, to be fair, it's not the highest it could be either. And you can now see that my build is took the deviation into the tank one at first i was buying uh i was going to be buying the warriors enchantment by the way here's what i mean by the that awareness the zero was very clearly going to get go close to the wall so i could be able to dunk him but victor was nowhere near the near him i could have used my ultimate on him but yeah, i wouldn't have the enough power to kill him without victor anywhere around so i just figured i might as well save the cooldown there's how i was going i was thinking now i'm going to be building center hulk now and the item i built for the warrior I'll probably try to make it into something else. I was looking at the item choices I had, and I decided their magic damage is pretty gruesome and it's really hurting me. So I'm going to end up building a Maul of Mordius. It's not usually one of the first items I ever get on, Zer uh, on Jarvan, or actually one of the rarer items I get on him. But I see it as more of a, you know, might as well, just, just might as well make the item, the AD item I already bought as worth it as possible, you know, force it into something that will be at least useful. So right now I'm pretty bruisery, but my end, of my end build is going to be mostly tanky. With my alternative plan develop developing in my head, I'm just thinking, my plan right now will be to try to go in there and absorb uh, just Brand's damage or something. Just sort of a face, a face tank the Zeroth and the Brand's uh, little missile things, and hopefully, hopefully, the Vayne can kill somebody. Here, we actually use the explosion plans, how they, or a riot plan, I guess. 
We ex we go over the wall. We trap them both. Uh, we kill the brand first, mostly because the the Caitlyn had it obviously escapes. We kill brand. Vayne gets super low, and we sh we beat down the Caitlyn, and then in comes the enemy Zeroth's ultimate, and then in comes the Nocturne finishing off Thresh. But I'm not done yet. Uh, obviously, I have to run away from Nocturne because I'm going to die from him. But Victor's coming from the flank, and the Nocturne doesn't seem uh, seem to notice or really care or whatever. So. I try to go for him, or at least try to bait him to try to kill me. Uh, I think he thought he was going to be sneaky. So he goes around, knock him up, I run away. And he simply kind of just didn't pay attention to the fact that Victor was coming. He avoids everything, mostly because Victor misses, and then Victor goes a little too gung-ho. So the Nocturne thinks he could pick him off, which is honestly really dumb. So he, he immediately destroyed Nocturne now that my teammates have revived and had a long, long chance of just walking in there. Zeroth too with no mo with I mean no health just kind of stuck around too so he ended up getting killed too. The, again the enemy team shouldn't have really died in this situation. The only reason we had that was because Nocturne completely disregarded the fact that Victor went all the way from mid lane chasing the Zeroth for a little bit all the way to bottom lane and then I, I don't know he didn't process any of that and then even when Victor sort of put a chase after. Uh, Chase after him, went through the wolves or something. He just kind of didn't get the idea that maybe that my team would have arrived by then, right? So that was a huge lapse of judgment from the enemy team. And that's actually a really big deal because it's going to let us come back. Unless the Vayne decides to, for some reason, uh, she actually kind of dove into the brand and got herself, you know, cooked. So she died. However, it's a 4v5 right now, but we kind of do have the initiative because they burned a lot on the Vayne. And aside from the Poppy, they're kind of easy to kill. So what I'm hoping is that somebody does something stupid. And again, thankfully it's the Nocturne. He comes in, we slow him, we do a lot of damage, and then we, I dunk him alongside the Victor. And I do burn my flash because I want to take as least, least damage as possible, but in retrospect it shouldn't have. Anyways, we go in, it's a 4v4 now, but a lot of our stuff is burned just as much as their stuff is. And unfortunately Thresh gets caught and absolutely killed. Darius gets a little too close and he has to burn his stuff. Victor's positioning is just dreadful, so he gets killed off. And that's pretty terrible for us. But it wouldn't be as terrible. I mean, it's not as terrible because they decide to chase the Darius. And I just sort of flank the, the uh, surprise flank the, or attack the, uh, sorry, the brand and finish him off easily. They give chase. They can't, I'm like, I'm, I could just keep running, but I, I decide since I have a high enough health, they can't kill me fast enough. So I was using myself to protect the Darius. And... That, and that whole situation could have been a lot worse, but it didn't. Mostly because the enemy team got a little too uh, feisty there. We got a kind of a free kill on the brand. Nocturne didn't need to die, so whatever, right? It, it could have been worse. And I'm sorry if we're kind of mumbling or jumbling, but yeah, it's just kind of uh, this is kind of how it happens sometimes. I you know, guys know my speech impediment. bit. Anyways, my build. Here comes the Mala Mordia is building it, uh, magic resistance and everything. Actually, no, I'm building Tiamat first because I'm going to be building Hydra. Or whatever that the tank hydra thing i think i forgot what it's called um yeah uh titanic hydra i think i don't know whatever i'm building it just so i can deal some damage my my intention still here is kind of try to kill somebody but mostly just absorb as much damage as possible and be this sort of heat seeking missile and here is a very frustrating situation i eq but poppy pops her thing probably she didn't even know it was coming she just kind of did it instinctively and stopped me and here, you can't see it in the replay, but I was butt fuck blind here. I couldn't see anything or wherever anybody was, so I couldn't dunk my target. And I just kind of unceremoniously died. That's yeah, pretty sad. Anyhow, yes, we're back in the, you know, in the bad situation. I mean, we've been in the bad situation the entire game, but now we're once again on the defensive. However... As is solo queue, the enemy team, you know, sees the vein getting a little bit pummeled and they think, you know what, we can go in for the murderous kill right now. They go in, they go out, the Zerath gets a little too close, he gets pretty much grabbed and absolutely uh, ass blasted. I jump in, destroy the brand rather easily and then just sort of back off. And then my teammates are able to grab the Caitlyn and the Poppy, the, po the Caitlyn tries to run away. And the Poppy's pretty much is going to try to be a sacrificial lamb, but unfortunately for them, they all get wiped out. And Nocturne just kind of was split pushing so he, he just kind of survived the whole ordeal and then i think they, i don't know if they catch doctor i don't give a shit but yeah this is it's so cute in a nutshell right oh look we have somebody who we perceive as a threat and no health let's completely disregard the rest of their team despite the fact that in in their team can be as dangerous if we fumble into that shit right yeah again let me let me rephrase that they they got the vein and they're like yes if we kill vein we should win 
but they forget that if they approach any situation poorly, especially tower diving, they're all gonna get killed. And they did. I, I, I forgot, they, they didn't even get the vein, she just went back and healed, and then just came back and killed somebody, so yeah, it's pretty bad for them. So, pray for us, sort of resets the bad situations we're going for, but not entirely. Anyhow, Anyhow, right now, the, the the play of the game right now is map control. It's like, if we dive them in a good situation, we'll easily wipe them out. However, the positioning of my team has been pretty poor, and honestly, the decision making on their team has been pretty much equally as bad. So right now, it's just whoever kills somebody important on the enemy team will kind of win. And as you can see by the, how my team is super spread out, that's pretty much going to happen. So, the enemy team is pushing in mid right now. We're trying to recall everybody. And just the Darius, he's just kind of get, he gets caught by the enemy team, but they can't do anything. And then the Caitlyn sort of just kind of forgets that you know he might actually still be there, so she gets caught, and we immediately just bone fuck her. She's dead. And now we give chase. Nocturne gets caught. He's gonna get he killed. Although he's gonna do quite a bit of damage to the vein, I think. I don't know. And then we give it a little bit of a chase. I EQ over and I, with a flash, and I don't manage to actually kill the 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 Zerath quickly enough. But whatever, the enemy team can't do anything between the front line of me and Darius. They uh, Poppy blasts us off. I give chase to the Zeroth. I don't. I disregard what my teammates were doing because there's no way the Zeroth can kill me with all my magic resistance. So I avoid those little traps of just going back and waiting for my EQ cooldown, chase him, kill him, and the rest of the enemy team sort of falls apart too. I don't even know how the brand survived, but whatever. So you can see, great situation for us. And speaking of needless deaths, though here, um, <clears throat> speaking of needless deaths. Uh, Nocturne goes in, kills the Vayne, and then we sort of just try to run away. Uh, watch kind of how I do it. I'm, I'm putting, I'm not easy to kill, so I'm just kind of try. I was trying to take as much damage as possible, using my W to slow them or whatever, and taking those and hit as much free hits against Nocturne, because he got a little, he got a little too greedy for the rest of my teammates. He got so low that if my ultimate had come off better, better cooldown, I might have been able to finish him off, or whatever. Anyways, here's what I mean by meet needless deaths. Baron is up. The enemy team is going and. The Zero, for whatever reason, actually kind of tried to fight the, the, the Darius, and he got killed. Darius goes in because he's got his ult, uh, his passive thing up, and he tries to do a lot of damage, and he needlessly dies. Nocturne gets super cocky and just uh, passes his little mastery symbol, and ends up getting a little too close to us, and pretty much promptly dies. So hooray for him, dying like a bitch. So then Brand is here, and he easily gets caught because I don't know what he was trying to do. I think he warded. And then he gets killed too. So we got basically three free kills. Sure, Darius died and he kind of didn't need to die. But those were still three pretty much free kills. It, it cost us some ultimate or whatever. And talking about needless deaths. <clears throat> I EQ into the Caitlyn for some fucking reason. I, I guess I thought that maybe I, I wouldn't die as quickly. Or as pathetically. But I died really pathetically. I don't even know why the fuck. In retrospect, I was like, why the fuck did I do that? I don't know if that it, it, it repercussion is that we can't really be pushing, although to be fair, we wouldn't be able to push either way because they still kind of have the Baron buff and they push against us. So yeah, I mean, I'll respawn in time before they actually get to, you know, to the inhibitor. I mean, they're there physically, but they're not attacking it. So, yeah, that's a bad situation. Either way, team fight happens. It's a ridiculously bad one. Look how spread out my team is, right? We have high threat champions, but nobody's protecting the vein. The Darius just is hitting the wind. And me, I, I caught them, but I have no damage of my own, so I pretty much did nothing. That was an atrocious team fight. And honestly, because of how bad that one was, we pretty much do deserve to lose the game. And we do such that. And we do that. Just That was really bad. Up until this game, we were kind of do, you know, recovering and doing performing well. And there was a lot of, you know good place here and there maybe but damn we deserve to lose after that team fight alrighty then it's time for another loot crate unboxing this is the December crate it's a bit I think it's a believe it was a fantasy inspired one so I'm gonna assume stuff like uh, I don't know hopefully Mountain Blade but that's wishful thinking I'm gonna just assume maybe like For Honor because I think they were promoting that Assassin's Creed and just basically nice stuff probably Dark Souls too but we'll see Anyways. Let's see, obviously there's always a shirt first, and I always get out first. Hey, this one's a, a thick one. Oh. Okay. Uh, okay, I don't even, I, I'm gonna assume I know what it is. It looks sort of looks like a Mario themed, what's called, uh, uh sh I don't know, it says Mr. Robot. Oh, is that, oh, is that show? Uh, Mr. Robot, I, I think that's what it's called? Well, I don't know. It's called a show, it says, I'm gonna assume Fuck Society. But it's whatever I forgot. We got something November. Uh, 
about Guy, Guy Fox. There we go, Guy Fox. I was trying to remember. I just kind of associated with neck beards now. I don't know what this is, but I'll look at the book. It looks like Mario, but it says Mr. Robot, so I'm going to assume it's something else. <clears throat> All right? It's a box, so it's going to be a little figurine, and it is an Aguilar. Okay, Assassin's Creed. I haven't played any Assassin's Creed beyond the first two, so I don't know who this character might be, or actually I didn't even really play the second one all that much, so I actually don't even know. So I don't know this, but my brother's played every single one because he really likes Assassin's Creed, so I'm just going to give this one to my brother. So there you go. That one's for him. Eh. Or I guess my wife. I don't know. Oh, this shit. This book's huge. It, it feels like a book. So this one's... Oh, yeah, yeah, that. Eh. It's a huge book, all right? And it is Pop Culture Photography of Daniel Picard, all right? Oh, Afterward by Kevin Smig and Forward by Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg, you know, from, uh, let's call it, uh, Shot of the Dead. Oh, a little card here. I don't know. It has a code for me. I'll use it for myself if I like it. So, are these action figures, I think? Action figures doing, yeah, they're action figures doing things. So... I guess this is, if you like this kind of pop culture kind of stuff, it's fine. And look at the Snake Eyes and Boba Fett and other characters and whatever. Okay, this is just for people who appreciate it, I guess. My friend Mike, because he's a pop culture kind of nerd and he loves toys and figurines. He really likes toys and figurines. So whatever. Me, myself, I, I probably wouldn't as appreciate it as much as some people would, so eh, it's okay. But yeah, you know, people who do these kinds of things with toys... You know, those stop motion things you sometimes see on YouTube, they tend to be fun. But hey, it's a, big, it's a pretty big book. I'll give this one to a friend as well. So far, only the shirt for me, although I don't really understand what the shirt is for. I'm going to take out just the rest of the contents because it seems like that thing took up most of the space. A Firefly Independence patch. Oh, look, it's a little Firefly thingy. I still haven't watched Firefly. Don't hate on me for that. I have a friend who does, so... I would just give this to them. You know, thankfully, this is pretty good, mostly because I didn't give out things for December because my ass is poor. So, I guess I got three things, mild things to give to friends. We're at the age where we really, really don't give a shit too much about gifts, so whatever. Anyways, the Loot Crate thing is a Assassin's Creed symbol. I think, uh, yeah, there you go. Assassin's Creed little loot, pad, uh, loot pin. It's not, it's pretty cool for the, uh, it's usually Loot Crate's church to do their own unique one for whatever the thing is, but this one's just kind of like a straight out Assassin's Creed thing. And now we got this little book where I look at what the shirt is. And look, it's a little, oh, I guess right now the loot crate itself is uh, a little temple you can build. A little temple you can build and you can put your little figurine on top of it. Like, you know, you, if you make it, you can end up putting it as a little decoration. I'm not going to do it right now because it can take a little while. But you can imagine it from looking at the little, uh, from the little notebook. And I'll see what the shirt, what's the shirt based off. Short. Hmm. Yeah, I actually, I actually don't even know what this is about. I guess Mr. Robot, the, the show, I, I'm assuming. I think that's what it's called. Whatever. If it was a Mario one, it'd be a little bit better because it looks like it, but nah. I'm not a fan of that show or whatever this is supposed to try to do. But whatever is a shirt, it's a shirt, and the quality of their shirts tends to be good regardless. Anyhow, my opinion of this crate, you know, it's not technically, it, I, it technically wouldn't be the worst one or a bad one. It's just I don't, the items that came here are just items I personally don't appreciate too much. So it's sort of like a, what do you call it, I'll, give, I'll be end up giving out pretty much most of these things to everyone. The shirt I'll wear it because to be fair, it's a good, it's a good shirt. So... It's, it's, I'll just put, you know, it's good that it came out in December, although the video is coming out much later, because most of this stuff I'll just be giving it away. So, hey, you know, if you want your own loot box, you can look in the description below and follow the link uh, in the description. So, hey.